Hello, my name is Teal. I am a fourth year medical student at the University of Washington. And today I'm going to be talking about anesthesiology and applying to residency. So we will go over the role of an anesthesiologist, why I decided to go into this specialty, some specific considerations, and um, other helpful information for when you apply to residency. So what does an anesthesiologist do? I think when we think about anesthesiologists, we typically think of the provider who's in the OR on the other side of the curtain, keeping the patient asleep. And while that is one role, uh, anesthesiologists also work in multiple other areas. So for procedures, colonoscopies, the cath lab, any procedure that requires sedation or um, pain control, you can find anesthesiologists working there. Um, frequently, anesthesiologists work in um, the ICUs or in pain clinics, and then also kind of similar to any area of medicine. If you're interested in research, um, that can be a large part of your practice as well. There are different types of anesthesia. So general anesthesia uh, can be given through an IV or can be inhaled through a mask. And this is the type of anesthesia that causes a patient to lose consciousness. So it's usually used for larger surgeries like knee replacements or open heart surgery. Monitored anesthesia or IV sedation uh, causes a patient to be relaxed and you can get kind of different varying uh, levels of consciousness. So depending on the procedure, you might want them to uh, not remember the procedure at all, or you might want them to be drowsy but still be able to talk. And so uh, this type of anesthesia is typically used for less invasive procedures like colonoscopies. Regional anesthesia um, is pain medication that's used to numb a large part of the body. So here we're thinking about epidurals, um, other spinal catheters, also like peripheral blocks for surgeries on the arm or the leg. And then lastly, local anesthetics are used um, and injected into like a small area where you can be awake for a surgery, um, but you won't feel the pain of a surgery on like your hand or something like that. I went into anesthesia for multiple reasons. So first I made the distinction between acute care and chronic care. So something that I really liked about anesthesiology was the instant gratification that you get from seeing the effect of your interventions. So if someone's blood pressure was too high, you can give them a medication and then within minutes, you know, see the effect of that medication. And I thought that was really rewarding versus, you know, prescribing medication and having your patient follow up in three weeks um, and kind of seeing how they're doing then. I also like anesthesia because you work with a bunch of different patients and a bunch of different providers. Um, so you kind of still get to be pretty general, but um, also specialized at the same time. Anesthesiologists don't have their own patient base, um, kind of like surgeons or primary care providers do. So that makes them pretty flexible. You're pretty replaceable. And so um, if you need to take a certain day off or if you need to switch around your schedule, you usually have colleagues who are able to um, kind of replace you without um, having it derail too many plans. Pharmacology and physiology is something that I really enjoyed during the first two years of medical school. Uh, I also like anesthesia because there's lots of hands-on procedures, um, lots of innovations, putting in arterial lines, putting in central lines, and I found that really fun. And then, um, of course, I like to wear scrubs or comfy pajamas and not have to dress up. Anesthesia residency is four years long. Uh, the anesthesia part itself is three years, and then you do an intern year before that. A lot of programs now are going to the four years combined, but we'll talk about that later. The median starting salary for an anesthesiologist is 371,000. Um, I got that number off the AAMC website where you can look at a bunch of different specialties. Anesthesiologists work pretty long days. They usually work 10 to 12 hours. You get there early in the morning and then you stay until um, your OR room is finished. And so they work an average of 61 hours a week.
Often medical students feel like they don't get exposed to anesthesia until their fourth year of medical school, but if you're proactive and you uh, seek out opportunities, I think that you can interact with anesthesiologists on the majority of your rotations. So specifically during your third year rotations for OB-GYN, I would talk with the anesthesiologists who are caring for your patients and see if you can help out or be present when they're putting in the epidurals, or if you're not scrubbed into the OR, you can uh, stand up with the anesthesiologist at the head of the bed during C-sections. In surgery, often you can intubate the patients or be involved with the pre-op blocks. In the ED, while you might not interact with anesthesiologists, you do get um, exposed to some of the procedures that they do, like intubation and sedation for cardioversions and other procedures. And then if you are at a psych facility that performs ECT, I would encourage you to um, go early in one morning to watch the ECT procedure and the sedation that's involved with that. For anesthesia electives, there's the basic anesthesia, advanced anesthesia, and then pain medicine. If you're thinking about going into anesthesiology, I would strongly suggest that you do the four-week advanced anesthesiology um, elective. That does count for one of your APCs, um, and it's strongly preferred over the basic anesthesia elective. There are lots of sites that you can do these different electives at, um, but keep in mind, uh, they usually don't have openings um, in the UW system for medical students in July because that's when the new anesthesia residents are starting. Um, and so just keep that in mind when you're trying to schedule your fourth year. For other electives, if you're wanting to go into anesthesia, palliative care um, is a good one. You'll get exposed to patients who are dealing with chronic pain. Uh, for critical care medicine, there's lots of ICU rotations, surgical ICU, neuro ICU, medical ICU. Um, so if you need a sub-I, um, those would be good ones. Cardiology, I did the cardiology consoles as well as the cardiology sub-I, and you get a lot of exposure to echoes, uh, which I think is great for someone going into anesthesia. And then pulmonary, uh, the clinical respiratory disease elective um, is another great one. Anesthesia follows the typical timeline, so there aren't any specific dates um, for just anesthesia. Um, it uses the ERAS application and the NRMP matching system. Things to keep in mind though, um, if you wanna go into anesthesia, you should definitely uh, schedule an anesthesia rotation, preferably the four week rotation prior to July of your MS4 year. That way you get exposed to anesthesia and you know if you really do wanna go into it and it gives your letter writers a time, uh, plenty of time to write you a letter before the letters of recommendation are due. And then the majority of interviews for anesthesia happen in November, December, and some in January. Um, so I'd say November, December would be the best months to take off in your MS4 year. So like I was talking about earlier, anesthesia is a three-year residency um, plus an intern year. And so categorical residency programs have all four years combined um, at one location. and Or you can do an advanced program where you would do an intern year um, somewhere else and then go to that institution for three years for your anesthesia training. On here, I put prelim medicine, prelim surgery, and a transitional year because those are the kind of typical um, intern years that you can do, but you can also do, um, you know, pediatrics or OB-GYN or neurology. Um, there's lots of different options for intern year. For letters of recommendation, I would recommend getting at least one letter from an anesthesia attending, but definitely don't get all three or four letters of recommendation from the anesthesia departments. Um, you have an intern year before starting your anesthesia training, and so program directors want to see that you are committed to you know, learning more medicine than just anesthesia and that you will work hard during your intern year. So if you're going to do a prelim medicine year, it'd be a good idea to get a medicine attending to write you a letter. Or if you're more interested in doing a surgery prelim year, you should probably get a surgeon to write you a letter of recommendation. And then for the last letter of recommendation, I would recommend just getting whoever you think 
knows you the best. Um, doesn't matter what specialty they're from, but if they can really talk to who you are as a person, your personality, and the things you bring to a residency program, that's going to be a stronger letter than, um, you know, a specific person from a specific department. Over the years, the competitiveness of anesthesia has kind of waxed and waned. Um, the latest data that I have is that the average step one is 231 and the average step two is 241 for fourth year medical students who match into anesthesia. A good way to make yourself competitive is obviously to do well on your board exams and then get honors in your clinical rotations. Research can also set you apart. Here I've attached the link to the Medical Student Anesthesia Research Fellowship. This um, is a good opportunity if you don't already have research experience or if you want anesthesia specific research experience. This is a fellowship that's run through the American Society of Anesthesiology and you can find different projects that you want to apply to. Um, it's usually a summer um, kind of 10 week sort of thing and then if you uh, complete your research, you should be able to uh, present at the ASA annual meeting, which is in October. Even if you don't have research to uh, present, I still would recommend going to the ASA annual meeting. It's a great opportunity to meet other medical students who are applying into anesthesia. And there's also a meet and greet with residency programs and their directors, um, so you can get some face time with them before the interview season. If you are interested in attending conferences, I've put the links to the two largest anesthesiology meetings each year. The first one is the one that I talked about previously, the anesthesiology meeting, which is put on by the ASA. It's a five-day event in October that is at various different locations. The uh, last year it was in Orlando, and for 2020 it's going to be in Washington, D.C. Um, there's over 14,000 anesthesia providers that attend this meeting. And there's a bunch of different um, conferences and presentations. So um, I would encourage you to go to that meeting if you're going to go to one. You obviously don't have to go to any of these conferences, though. The PGA is the second largest anesthesia conference, and it's every year in December in New York City. And if you are interested in going to one of these conferences, I would encourage you to apply for the Student Conference Travel Award. This is uh, put on through the MSA and um, it can help you with the expenses of flying across the country and paying for hotels. Anesthesia fellowships are each one year. Here's a list of the fellowships that are accredited through ACGME. There's also other fellowships available like ambulatory anesthesia, neuroanesthesia, public policy, transplant, and trauma anesthesia, which aren't accredited right now through ACGME. Um, there's also combinations of fellowships that you can do, and so a common one would be to do the adult cardiothoracic plus critical care together, which would be a two-year fellowship. This has been a pretty broad overview, so for more specific information and next steps, I would check out these websites. The American Society of Anesthesiologists has a medical student component, which has lots of helpful resources. Specifically, there's a PDF document called A Guide to a Career in Anesthesiology for Medical Students, which I would check out. The FRIDA Residency Database has information on specific programs and um, their hour requirements and just other information that's helpful prior to submitting your ERAS application. The NRMP residency match data has information on kind of just the statistics following the um, match process. And then Dr. Michael Hall is a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist at UW and is the career advisor for anesthesia. He's super nice and very helpful, so I would reach out to him if you have any questions. And lastly, this is my contact information. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns. And good luck!